Hi, welcome to ABC Solutions. And today I'll talk about how to prepare a cover letter for your postdoc applications. And this idea came to my mind like a few days ago because about a year ago I was preparing my own postdoc applications. And during that time, I found a few things were quite tricky because there is no direct guidelines or how to prepare an application appropriately. And most of us, even I did that, we typically went to a senior to put their uh, documents like cover letter, CV and change a little bit and then send it to different professors. And while I was doing that, I was quite fortunate enough, my mentors or my seniors told me, no, you should not uh, took that approach. And they gave me a very nice perspective about it. So I thought uh, through this platform, I can share that experience and also how what I learned from that, that I can uh, do it through a presentation. So let's see how to draft a cover letter for the post of application. So let's begin through this journey. I'll just put this point up. So I want to first uh, recommend you this book, which I read while I was preparing my applications, How to Land on Your Dream Postdoc by Andre Banerjee. So in this book, you'll find very nice ways of writing cover letters, CV, research statements, etc. Even uh, if you are going for a postdoc interview, they also try to cover those things in this book. Quite nice book, you found it in the Amazon and I'll also if it's link in the description of this video. So for me, uh, I typically divide a cover letter into three parts. So first part contains the introduction where you should give your name, institution name, supervisor, why, I, why you are writing the letter, then what is your PhD background and when you can join that position for which you are writing. Then comes the research part what is your PhD research, write a summary of it and what are the skills that you have gained from that. And the last and most important part is the why you want to join that particular professor's group. What is the motivation behind it and what you can contribute in that group. So that should be very clear. And the problem that I have mentioned that if you write a cover letter, took it from someone else, write it and send it to five different people or six different people, the same thing. Then the people who wrote the cover letter, that person very easily figured out it is not written for him because you will write a very broad letter and by reading it, one can easily know that it is not focused towards that particular group or that particular person. So that's a, that's a very key part. So now, what I will do, I will go through each of these three different sections and just present what, how I frame my letter. So in the introduction section, this is how I framed it. So it's just start with dear professor to whom you are writing. If you know the professor, just add one line like, hope you are doing well or something like that. I didn't know that professor, that's why I didn't add that. So as you can see, in this highlighted section, like I put my name. Then I'm working in the PhD with Professor Anand Kumar Chah, my supervisor's name, and I was working at IIT Kanpur. Then I just mentioned I'm writing for a postdoc position. And at the end, I just mentioned my research team, just mentioned my title here, which gives a nice overview of my uh, research area in online. And at the end, I just mentioned when I can join just by giving a tentative date of my thesis defense. So from this paragraph, one can get a very clear idea about like who you are, why you are writing this letter and what is your background and when you can come. So that's a very nice way to start. Next step, to present a summary of your research, what you have done in your PhD. So this is my summary. So in the first line, so I worked on two different topics. One is coherence, another is entanglement. So in first two lines, I just mentioned that, uh, like these are the two broad topics that I have worked. Then a little bit elaborate, what are the specific problems that I worked on in the coherence domain in that orange region. 
and then what are the problems that I worked on in the entanglement domain. As you can see, here I elaborated a bit this entanglement part. This is because the professor to whom I was writing this letter, he worked mostly in the entanglement domain. So that's why I feel that I should elaborate my PhD results on entanglement a bit more because or emphasize those results a bit more because then I can connect my uh, current capabilities or current research expertise to that particular group. So that's the motivation behind it. So if you are writing your research summary, then if you find some of your projects are connected to that particular lab, then emphasize those results a bit such that, and try to build a connection with that. That would be nice. Next, I'll talk about what are the skills that one, one gets. So here I mentioned about my experimental and theoretical research skills. You can mention about your own skills. Suppose you are working in a condensed matter experimental lab. So I think one will learn how to handle different instruments, how to build up different experimental stuff. So just mention those things or if you know any sort of programming, then the, if you are working in a theory, what are the theoretical skills you develop? So those things one should mention. Then I did some simulations. So I just wrote I knew Python and MATLAB and LabVIEW stuffs. And at the end, just to complete that story, like I just wrote, these are my, this first two uh, green and orange sections are my skills that I have developed. And in that yellow section, where my skills are important. So my skills are important, suppose in quantum measurement or entanglement, imaging, communication. So these are the research themes where my skills are really important. So that completes the story of my skill. And these research themes are actually connected to that particular professor's research uh, work. So, so far I have introduced myself who I am and also I have, gave, I have given a summary of my research capabilities. Next, why I want to join that group? That's very important, like what's the motivation? And for that, I just framed it like I followed their research papers over the years and I found this green highlighted regions that I mentioned few research areas which they were working on and I found those areas are quite exciting to me. And fortunately, those research themes are quite well connected with my PhD research work. So this is uh, so this could be a bit positive point sometimes because I already knew what sort of work they do and I have some expertise in that direction. That's why that doesn't imply if your current PhD research work is not connected with their work, you should not apply. If you find it interesting, you should apply. In that case, you need to change your letter a bit. So in this video, I'll not talk about this. If you are interested, I can make a separate video for those type of situations. So I hope I was able to summarize it properly like these are the research areas I found it quite exciting and these areas are quite overlapping with my current research expertise. So that's a very strong motivation to go there. Next, what I can contribute there. Fine, I'm motivated enough but do, you have any, do I have any plan? So that's why I like uh, put it little bit in a descriptive manner but if you want, you can cut it a bit shorter, but the main message is like to frame a plan. So I just wrote it like there are a few research themes that I want to work on, like quantum measurement, entanglement, imaging, etc. On those themes, I really want to work in my PhD postdoc tenure. And in those themes, I pointed out a few broader problems. That these are the problems on those areas I am interested in and I really want to work on that. So that basically shows uh, I quite thoroughly went to their research profile or that lab's research activities 
and based on their activities i put an effort to make my own plan so that reflects some effort to that that i am putting to get that particular position and that might give a positive impression uh, for your uh, to your application from the professor perspective so that's why i build it in this manner you don't need to i feel i was little bit descriptive here you can cut it bit short and last point that i added that uh this is a bit cliche but i think it is quite important as well like these are my plans and even beyond those plans if you have something uh if that professor wants me to work on something else i am ready to work on that shows my flexibility and as well as that will also diversify my research uh, skills so that is also important like if you are given a new stuff beyond your plan are you flexible enough to take it up or not so that's what i want to express so and at the end i wrote it i believe that my background and interests are quite suitable for a post doctoral position in your group you can just write something like that so hopefully here i am able to summarize or frame why i want to join that group as well as with a very strong plan like what i can do there what i can contribute to their uh, in their group so i'll now come back to my first slide like yeah so through this presentation i hope i gave you a overview or a framework to write a cover letter where one should come begin with the introduction section like name institution supervisor name why you are writing the letter then give a one line for your phd research then write a summary of your research summary of your skills and try to connect your research and skills with their ongoing research it is quite crucial then that builds a connection and at the end find a motivation why you want to go there and work and if you go there and work what you can contribute so that's the part by and what so hopefully you got an idea about this how to frame a cover letter and i i look forward to your feedback or your comments regarding this video and if you want such more content please write in the comment section i can come up with more such stuffs for example uh this part i found bit tricky and it took a while why and what like how to frame my motivation how to frame my research plans so we can, i can also make more videos about how to strategize those things so for now uh kindly share and subscribe this video as well as this channel and i want to thank you for your attention and bye bye